anyway, so that started a long friendship. And so over the years, uh, Timo and I would talk about uh, music and virtuosity became a topic that we were kind of discussing and, and you were working on a book about virtuosity and still are, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's like a giant everything I ever studied in music, all in centrally located. That's sort of a general passion of mine is to unite all the music, unite all the culture, unite all the all the music, all the theories, all the techniques, so that it's not um, like you overly in one person's school or in one genre of music. It should all be in this centrally located. That's kind of my passion. Cool. Yeah. And, and then we would just, uh, whether I was helping you out, you know, with, uh, uh, some of your CD releases or your website and, you know, we were just always kind of exchanging and talking about music and often you were, you know, educating me about things and jazz. I didn't know. Oh man, back at you, you know, a lot more about many uh, genres of music that I do. Exactly. And so that's kind of where I kind of thought, God, we have these great conversations. Uh, that would make a great podcast. And it's a little, then let's do a podcast. So you know, even though even though you're sort of uh, humble about your identity as a musician, you you are on the quest in your own way. You, the quest doesn't have to be, you know, an eight hour practice to you hurt your hands devotional. It can be. You, you seem to uh, share the um, the joy of seeking out new great artists and drilling deeper into well, if I like this guy and this guy and this guy, and this girl and this girl, then who did they listen to? And then you go check everything, or, you know, or what did they spawn uh, musically? And then, you know, you, so you have that passion that, that uh, questing musicians have. Uh, well, thanks. Yeah. And I think that's why I think this is going to be a fun show. <laughs> um, I think it's going to be a fun podcast because we're going to get into all genres and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and yeah, and also exploring different things of, of virtuosity it doesn't always have to be about moving your hands fast and playing arpeggios or you know mind-blowing bowing techniques there's other things to be virtuoso of right and in, as a matter of fact that kind of leads me to our quote of the day um and uh because one of the things we want to talk about is kind of what are the different definitions of virtuosity because everybody has their own take on what that word means yeah, and, and you're not supposed to use it in regards to yourself. You sound like a pompous boob, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And also, virtuosity originally, well, I did a little research, was about um, musical virtuosity. That was the definition of the word. It wasn't about um, Michelangelo's virtuoso command of stone or something? No. The broader definition, moving to artists and other types of abilities kind of came later. Ah. Uh, so uh, the, you know, let's do the, the here's the Merriam-Webster de definition, a great technical skill as in the practice of a fine art. Ah. So now it's got that broader context. Here's another, here's the, the next uh, definition, number one, uh, one who excels in the technique of an art, especially a highly skilled musical performer as on the violin. So that's what we're gonna be exploring. We're gonna be exploring musical virtuosity and uh, believe art and literature and science uh, and other technical skills, you know, to other podcasts, but okay. our, our focus is gonna be music. And what about, what about historically, who was, who was this word applied to first? Good question. Right? right. Because when you think of, when you think of Bach, everybody knew he had a commanding keyboard technique and it was a hell, hell of a violinist, right? Yeah. Absolute pitch. Uh, but I don't think that word was applied to him. I guess if I'm guessing, I would maybe say Mozart. Yeah. Uh, I bet you the first virtuoso was Paganini, ah. if, I, if I was a betting man, which I'm not. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, more applied to the uh, musician. Yeah, more than the composer, so to speak. Yeah. Okay, so here's a quote about virtuosity. Uh, and this is by the writer John Barth. In art, as in lovemaking, heartfelt ineptitude has its appeal, and so does heartless skill. 
but what you want is passionate virtuosity. Yeah. So, I like that. yeah, I thought that was kind of an interesting quote because, uh, you know, I think for me, virtuosity often incorporates technical levels of skill. Um, and I think we associate that a lot with it. Um, but as we're going to explore, there's ways to be uh, a virtuoso that doesn't mean just fleet fingers on right, key right. keyboards or over strings. But I think when we get into different um, genres and different topics uh, in the future, we'll find that, that, and I remember you actually, I remember a conversation we had one time where I um, played you a recording of uh, Andy Statman, who is a bluegrass mandolin player, but also a klezmer clarinet virtuoso. And and we were listening to the piece and he wasn't playing <laughs> yeah. super fast. He was, it was a more <laughs> yeah. um, slow, dramatic kind of piece. And you pointed out to me that virtuosity is mastery of the instrument, but that doesn't always mean fast fingers. That means tone and the bending of notes and the way that the musician can craft the sound. And yeah. It can be on a very slow, dramatic yeah. piece with hardly any notes. 